To discuss that, we're uh, joined by Ruben Varanyan. He is the ch executive chairman, CEO, and chairman of Troika Dialogue, Russia's oldest investment bank. Last year was a great year, obviously, for the Russian stock market, up some around 130 percent. But Russia has a little bit of a problem with consistency, doesn't it? You think this year is going to be as good as last? Uh, I think it will be a good year, not uh, like compared with last year, because last year was jumped back after the dramatic going down in 2008. But we quite positive about emerging market, and Russia specifically will be one of the most attractive countries for investors to invest. Uh, by prediction in a World Economic Forum discussion, by Russian internal discussion, we see a lot of potential for Russia to become very uh, good investment opportunities. We've heard Rus the Russian finance minister, we've heard Goldman Sachs say, yeah, it looks good for the year, but in the short term, because of tightening of, of credit in China, maybe there won't be that demand for Russian commodities. So maybe one ought not buy uh, Russian stocks, uh, at least on a short term horizon. What do you make of that? Yeah, it's uh, again, we all realize how Russia depended for the price of the natural resource commodity type of shares. But at the same time, again, short term, what short term is one, two weeks time, but looking at more a little bit longer, like six yeah. months, we see definitely good opportunity for Russian stocks will be performing better. Because in comparison, despite of the all growth that happened last year, the Russian uh, companies continue quite cheaper compared to some way comparison companies. Tell me about the, well, uh, the debt market. $60 billion of capital raising from Russian companies. That's what's expected this year. Do you think that there's an appetite for Russian debt out there? I'm sure, yes. We see already last uh, half of the year, last year, we, when market reopened, we already saw it from investors, and local investors and, and international investors, it's a big appetite for Russian debt. Again, yeah. people are now more careful and looking more specifically about details, what is guarantee, what is covenant, what is who, what the company's cash flow. But yes, I would say for the number one tires companies, yes. Part of the reason for that appetite is obviously all the liquidity out there from central banks pumping it in. As they start raining that, ba raining that back, do you, do you think that that interest in Russian debt will 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 be no. sustained. No, it will be an influence, of course, of all the debt market. It's not only yeah. for Russia, but uh, I think Russian companies, some who do well in uh, uh, generating revenue, will be really attractive for the raising debt because again, yeah, not so many companies in the worldwide doing very good uh, profit results in like this year. That's why for raising debt. It will be Russian companies will be quite interested. Russian government is going to sell between 10 and 20 billion dollars of debt itself this year. That's sovereign debt in 2010. You're apparently going to be one of the banks that's going to be involved with that. That's what the Russian finance minister uh, said today. Is there that appetite for Russian sovereign debt? Oh, I'm sure because altogether Russian government that is only 35 billion dollars, where GDP is 1.4 trillion dollars. Is why it's showing how big is uh, Russia government can go to raise money in debt compared to many other countries. And Russia was out of this market last five or more years, and it's definitely it's a very interesting uh, new entry in a debt market. We believe it's a very important. Will be event. Who's going to get the IPOs? We saw Mr. Dede Pasca take Rusal to Hong Kong, first uh, IPO of the year in Asia, first Russian IPO of the year. Uh, are we going to see more of that, or you expect uh, London, uh, the traditional place, a uh, destination of choice for Russian companies, to, uh, I don't know, come back? And, and I, I will say we definitely believe there will be more IPOs, not only in London and Hong Kong, but also in Moscow, first of all. And I will say the Russian government will do whatever we can to convince investors to, to buy uh, local shares, and they're trying to make the changes. You, you, you heard what the Minister of Finance said what the, yesterday, we had a discussion about improving investment climate. One of the, one of the points was about uh, how to make Moscow attractive, and the IPO will happen in Moscow, not in Hong Kong or London. Uh, also, between London and Hong Kong will be very depending, depending from the uh, how the regulators from England will regulate some of the elements, including the taxation and other things. We only got about 15 seconds. You tell some of Russia's wealthiest people what to do with their money. What are you advising them now? What are they doing, the Russian billionaires, with their cash? Diversification and buying real assets. Buying real assets. Where? In all over the world. Now, we're Russians going not only in Russia, not going in the United States and America, but uh, Western Europe, but also in Asia, Africa. Now, with our deal with Standard Bank, we believe it's a very good opportunity in some, doing some in Africa deals. All right, Ruben Vardanyan, thank you very much. That was, of course, the executive chairman or the CEO and chairman of uh, Troika Dialogue, Russia's oldest investment bank.